There is a strange fascination in the world with the supernatural. People feel and know that there is something more than this natural world that we see and touch. They know that there is something that lies beyond our five senses. And there are people who would even go looking for the supernatural. People who are called ghost hunters, demon chasers. The church is strangely divided on the supernatural. Half the Christian church turns a blind eye to it. They say, we don't believe supernatural or paranormal things happen. We don't want to hear about it. We don't want to talk about it. And we would rather run and avoid the topic altogether. The other half of the church is not afraid of the supernatural and knows that the Bible speaks of a lot of supernatural things. And the Bible even tells us of supernatural prophetic events that will happen in the future. The Bible tells us clearly in Hebrews 9, 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. According to the Bible, the spirits of people do not wander. They do not go from place to place and so on. They face judgment and either go to one of two places, heaven or hell. There is no neutral ground or time spent on the earth haunting a place. However, if you define ghost as a spirit being, the answer to that question is, yes, they are real. Spirit beings can be either good or bad. We see in the Bible time and time again evidence of spirit beings manifesting themselves into our physical world. God's holy angels are real, and they are ministering angels. Hebrews 1.14 are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs to salvation? They guard and obey the commands of God. Demons are evil spirits, and there is nothing friendly about demons. They are destructive, evil, and unrelenting spirits. One thing you need to know is that they are deceptive spirits. 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Just as the angels have access to a house or people's homes, demons and evil spirits also have access to people's homes. The kind of spirits in homes is determined by the people who are in that house and what they do or say. As Christians, the kind of spirit that we would love to be in our homes is the Spirit of God and God's holy angels. Every house, building, or place has an atmosphere in that place. You can't expect a home that practices occult involvement to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The atmosphere you have in a gentleman's club is completely different to the one you have in a church. The atmosphere you have in a casino is completely different to the one you have in a church. We want the Holy Spirit to be in charge of our homes so that we will be blessed abundantly objects. We need to talk more about this because many Christians are harboring demons in their homes in the name of art. Christians are inviting demons and evil spirits in their homes in the name of design. Why do you need a wallpaper of the devil in your home? Why do you need a statue of a dragon in your home? You don't need to be a theologian to know that is a bad idea. Some Christians will see an object that they know is a cursed object and still acquire them because they want to beautify their homes. Look, there are better things that will beautify your home than bringing in extra problems for yourself. We need to start opening our eyes to see things. We need to start getting rid of all these cursed objects in homes. For how long will you hold these things in for them to destroy your home and you? Some people will be using jewelry with dragon occult symbols and think there is no harm in it. There was a story of a woman who would have episodes of rage. She could not control her anger. This started completely out of the blue for her. She went for counseling to her pastor. The pastor prayed and nothing happened. He did all he could, but there was no sign of deliverance. Later, God told this pastor to remove the neck chain she was using and break it. After he removed it and broke it, they found an inscription that says, Sold to Satan. The pastor did not pray much later before she was delivered. Many of us carry cursed objects just in the name of fashion, and we bring problems into our homes. I still can't get why many Christians don't believe there are cursed objects. You may think these things happen in movies alone. They are things happening around the world. Save yourself and run from these cursed objects. I want to challenge us today. I want us to go and take any cursed object in our homes and get rid of them. I know many will say they have acquired it with a huge amount of money, but the truth is, the damage and affliction they will bring to your life 
No amount of money will be able to solve it. I am not saying this to scare you. I just want you to be exposed to the truth. To be sincere, not all paintings or objects are evil. But why do you need to buy a lamp that is in the shape of an occult symbol that shouldn't be in your home as a child of God? This is why we need the Holy Spirit to help us identify the truth. We see in the book of Mark so many instances where Jesus overpowered the forces of darkness. Mark 1.34, And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. Mark 1.39, And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. Mark 3.15, And to have power to heal sickness, and to cast out devils. Mark 6.13, and they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. Mark 8.33 But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Over and over again we see our Lord Jesus casting out devils and not running away from them and not ignoring their reality. God wants his people to know the truth, and if you want to know the truth, you will find it in the Bible. God doesn't want us to be ignorant to the devil and his plans. God wants us to know that great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If God didn't want us to know about demons, why would he put it in his Bible? The world is full of people who have opened themselves up to demon portals, and you and I can't be ignorant. We need to know that there is a real spiritual battle that is spilling out into our world. The devil wants to take over, and the best and easiest way for him to do so is for us to ignore his presence and his reality. There is that famous quote, The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. We, as children of God, don't have to be afraid, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The power of God is in you. You have the name of Jesus, and every knee bows at the name of Jesus. Every demonic structure falls at the name of Jesus. Demons are cast out at the name of Jesus. There is victory in that name. There is power in that name. There is hope and holiness in that name. There is no other name higher than the name of Jesus. Sometimes these spirits maneuver people, making them to act in certain ways or speaking through them. Everyone is filled with a spirit, and as a child of God, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If someone is not filled with the Holy Spirit, they are filled with something else.